Before we start, let's pray first the Lucian prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, O God, wellspring of goodness and blessings, we give you thanks and praise as one Lucian community. The graces you incessantly grant upon us and your divine providence have sustained our beloved university throughout the years of mission and excellence. Having been founded by the Congregation of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, we pray that you keep us committed and dedicated to our mission and identity, to serve the Church and the society as we become living witnesses to the Gospel values proclaimed by Jesus. For if we are steadfast in our good and beautiful mission, our works will bring success not only to ourselves but also to those whom we are bound to love and serve. Inspired by St. Louis, our patron saint, who was filled with a noble spirit that steered him to love you above all things, may we also live believing that we are born for a greater purpose and mission as we dwell in your presence all the days of our life. Grant all these supplications through the intercession of Mother Mary and through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome back to Lucian Jam. Welcome to the second installment of our online learning on 21st century literature from the Philippines and the world. Before we proceed to our next topic, let's have a recap first on the things that transpired last week. So last week we discussed the different definitions of literature. We also discussed the significance of literature, then lastly, we also tackle the seven literary standards. So for today, we are going to start a brand new topic specifically on the different elements of a short story, followed by the difference between prose and poetry, then fiction and non-fiction. Let's start with the different elements of a short story. I believe and I suppose that your junior high school teachers have discussed the different elements of a short story. So this is not something novel nor unfamiliar to all of you. So later on, you'll be encountering the same information that you've encountered during your junior years. So let's start. First element is character. Characters are the representation of a human being involved in a conflict, or simply, they are the ones who are portraying the roles in a story. It could be Jughead in Riverdale, Eleven in Stranger Things, Tokyo in Money Heist, or Number 5 in Umbrella Academy. All of those are examples of characters. Now, character has two types. We have protagonist and antagonist. Basically, protagonist is the hero of the story. While antagonist, it's the other way around. It's the villain or it's the foil to the protagonist. Don't you know that according to Reader's Digest, they actually conducted one survey in UK and they found out that Joker is considered as one of the most hated characters of all time. I don't know why, but probably because Joker was a well-played character in the story. But of course, we can also learn a lot of values, good values from antagonist characters. Just like Cersei Lannister from the Game of Thrones, where she values a lot her family because she believed in the saying that family comes first before anything, which was actually resembled by her character. And that is all about the first element, character. Next element is setting. Setting is the locale or period in which the action of a short story, play, novel, or the motion picture takes place. Local color described as local scenery, the writer uses words, gives names to characters' lines to create a vivid picture of 
a native place. Or simply, in layman's terms, setting is the place where the story happened. It also includes temperature, mood, atmosphere, and weather condition. An example of a good setting is the setting of The Hobbit. It actually took place in a magical place. But if you're going to look how it was presented in the story and in the movie, you can see reality instead of a fantasy. That's the beauty of a good setting. Next element is theme. If there's one element that you really have to focus into, that would be theme. Basically, theme is the central idea of the story. A story could either be about love, happiness, sorrow, success, and failures. That is all about theme. Next element is point of view. The writer's feelings and attitude towards his subject. It determines who tells the story and identifies the narrator of the story. Or in simpler terms, point of view, it is how the story is narrated. Point of view has three types. We have first person point of view, second person point of view, and third person point of view. Now let's start with first person point of view. The writer uses the pronoun I. He, she could be a participant or a character in his own work. While second person point of view, it uses the pronoun you. This is what we call the you perspective because it belongs to the person or people being addressed. And lastly, we have third person point of view. Third person point of view has three types. We have limited, omniscient, and editorial. Limited point of view, a narrator reports the facts and interprets events from the perspective of a single character. While omniscient from the word omni, everything, the writer sees all. He can see into the minds of characters and even report everyone's innermost thoughts. Then lastly, we have editorial. The facts of a narrative are reported by a seemingly neutral, impersonal observer or recorder. So that is all about point of view. Next, we have plot. Plot is the sequence of events in the story. What happens as a result of the main conflict is being presented in a structure format. And that is what, is what we call pyramid of plot. I believe that this pyramid is not something new to you already because you've encountered this one during your junior years. Let's start with introduction, also known as exposition. It introduces the time, place, setting and the main characters of the story. After exposition, we proceed to the rising action or also known as the complication. It unfolds the problems and struggles that would be encountered by the main characters leading to the crisis. Now, after rising action, we proceed to the highest part, which is, of course, the climax. It's the result of the crisis. This is the part where the problem or the conflict is at its highest peak of interest. Now, after the climax, we have the falling action or also known as the Noma. It's the untying of the entangled problems. It shows a conflict or a problem being solved. Then after falling action, we proceed to the last one, which is, of course, the conclusion. It contains the last statements about the story. So that is the pyramid of plot. Next, and probably the last element is conflict. 
It is the struggle or complication involving the characters, the opposition of persons or forces upon which the action depends in drama or fiction. Conflict has four types. We have man versus man, man versus society, man versus nature, and man versus himself. First, let's talk about man versus man. Man versus man is person against another person. While man versus society, it happens when the protagonist is in conflict with the values of his or her own society. While man versus nature, this happens when the character is in conflict with the nature. The lastly, man versus himself. It occurs when the protagonist is struggles within himself or herself. And that is all about conflict. Literature has literary devices. We actually have a lot of literary devices in literature. But for today, we are just going to focus on two literary devices which are the following. We have flashback and foreshadowing. When we talk about flashback, the writer uses the past in order to make an impact in the present. Just like, for example, Money Heist the very famous series in Netflix. Money Heist uses flashbacks to flesh out the backstory of how the characters were able to reach the heist. The flashback in this show are primarily a great way of elongating the story. A heist that could take place over the course of an episode or two is instead extended to a whole series. That is flashback. And next we have foreshadowing. Foreshadowing, it is a literary device that shows what will happen in the future through the action of the character. The best example for this would be Pixar films. All films produced by Pixar. It's hard to know where to start, but basically all you need to know is that the people over Pixar clearly have some kind of group attention deficit disorder. Probably because they can't go a whole movie without knowing what their next film is going to be. But of course, meticulously referencing it in their current one. So whenever you encounter a Pixar film, there will always be a part wherein they would something or they would reveal something about their next movie. And that is an example of foreshadowing. So those are the two literary devices we have in literature. We actually have a lot, but a day or two is not enough to discuss all of those literary devices. So that is all about the different elements of a short story. Okay, let's proceed to our next topic, which is all about prose and poetry. Literature has two main divisions. We have prose and poetry. But under genres of literature, we can also find prose, poetry, followed by essay and drama. So I hope you'll not get confused with that one. Okay, let's proceed. First, let's try to differentiate prose with that of poetry. First, we have form. Whenever we talk about prose, we only use paragraph form, just like your essay, novel, short stories, and the like. While poetry, it uses stanza or verse form, just like your poem, your corrido, and some other examples of poetry. That's the first difference. Next, we have language. The language that we use in prose is just an ordinary language. It doesn't require you to become creative. Well, on the other side, it must be metrical, rhythmical, and figurative. Because basically, when we talk about poetry, you need to be creative. You need to be selective in the words that you use to produce a good poetry. Next, we have appeal. For prose, it appeals to our intellect, while poetry, it touches our 
emotion. Next, we have aim. The aim of poetry is to convince, inform, instruct, imitate, and reflect. Just like your news articles, your thesis, your dissertation, and some other examples of prose. While poetry, it steers the imagination and set an ideal of how life should be. So those are the differences of prose and poetry. Prose, words in their best order, while poetry, best words in their best order. Why is this so? Simply because in writing a prose, you can just use an ordinary language, just like writing a news article. You don't have to be creative. You can use ordinary language as long as it follows a good format or a good pattern. While poetry, you really have to be creative. You need to be selective with the words that you incorporate in your writing. Because poetry, you have to choose the best words together with their best order. And that is prose and poetry. Now let's proceed to prose, specifically on fiction and non-fiction. First, let's start with fiction. These are works of literature which are based from imagination, just like mysteries, sci-fi, romance, fantasy, crime thrillers. All of those are fiction genres. Examples of famous timeless fiction would include the following. We have The Notebook by Nicholas Sparks, Wuthering Heights by Emily Brown, Crazy Rich Asians by Kevin Kwan, and of course, the very famous The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. All of those are examples of fiction created by our imagination. First, let's start with novel. It is a fictitious narrative with a complicated plot. It may have a main plot and one or more subplots that develop with the main plot. You know, novel, it is an invented prose narrative of considerable length and a certain complexity that deals imaginatively with human experience, usually through a connected sequence of events involving a group of persons in a specific setting. An example of a famous novel that we have nowadays is, of course, The Kissing Booth turned into a movie by Netflix. The Kissing Booth was written by Beth Rickles when the author was just 17. Well, during season one, the novel's thematic concerns includes the immense freedom of today's teenagers and how they navigate the formation of their identities, values, and sexuality. While in the case of Lee and Noah, well, it involves their sibling rivalry. That is novel. And we still have a lot of good novels in the world. You just have to read them. Novelette. Novelette is also a narrative fictional prose. It is longer than a short story, but shorter than a novella. The term once implied a book that had a romantic or sentimental theme, but today a novelette can be any genre. While some writers still use the term novelette, others might prefer to simply call it a short novella or long short story. When compared to short stories, the length isn't the only difference with novelettes. Aside from a less serious form, novelettes generally need greater development of elements. Where short stories generally focus on a single scene, novelettes can expand much further, just like The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. The simple tale tells the story of a child, the little prince who travels the universe gaining wisdom. Well, the main theme of the story is expressed in the secret that the facts tells the little prince. And I quote, 
It is only with the heart that one can see rightly what is essential is invisible to the eye. That is The Little Prince by Antoine de Saint Exupery. And that is Novelette. We have Short Story. A fictitious narrative compressed into one unit of time, place, and action. It only deals with a single character interest, a single emotion, or series of emotion. A short story is self-contained and is not part of a series compared to a novel. Short stories are commonly published in magazines and anthologies or as collections by an individual author. A short story has more limited focus than novels or novelas or novelettes, and the plot is usually tied to one specific chain of events. For example, Dead Stars by Paz Marquez Benitez. It depicts a plethora of battles that a human being is involved depending on the circumstances and interactions with other human beings. Characters like Alfredo, Julia, etc. are fighting not just against the ads of fate has put before them, but also their circumstances, public and moral obligations. That is an example of a short story, and that is all about a short story. We have legend. These are fictitious narratives, usually about origins. It is a traditional story or a group of stories told about a particular person or place. You know, formerly, the term legend meant a tale about saint. Legends resemble folk tales in content. They may include supernatural beings, elements of mythology, or explanations of natural phenomena but they are associated with a particular locality or person and are told as a matter of history, just like the legend of bamboo tree and some other legends that we have in the Philippines. Of fantasy. I believe this is your favorite. Fantasy is a fiction genre that uses magic or other supernatural elements as a main plot element, theme, or setting. Many works within the genre take place in imaginary worlds where magic and magical creatures are common. For example, The Lord of the Rings by Tolkien. Tolkien's Middle Earth is so well drawn and rich with song and lore. It's actually hard not to get lost in it at all. It's a powerful story of friendship and the corrupting influence of power on the world. Now, if You've only seen this in movies, you'll find so much more the moment you've read the novel. So that is all about fantasy. Next we have fairy tale. A fairy tale is a type of short story that typically features folkloric fantasy characters such as dwarves, elves, fairies, giants, gnomes, goblins, mermaids, trolls, or witches, and usually magic or enchantments. For example, Maleficent 2, which continues to explore the complex relationship between the horned fairy, which is Angelina Jolie, and the soon-to-be queen, as they form new alliances and face new adversaries in their struggle to protect the Moors and the magical creatures that reside within. So that is an example of Maleficent. We also have Cinderella and some other fairy tale. Okay, next we have fable. It is a literary genre, a succinct fictional story in prose or verse that features animals, legendary creatures, plants, inanimate objects, or forces of nature. A moral or lesson for behavior is woven into the story and often explicitly formulated at the end. Of course, one of the most famous examples of fable is the tortoise and the eagle. Next, folk tale. Folk tales are generally passed 
down from one generation to another and often take on the characteristics of the time and place in which they are told. So basically, these are the stories that your Lolas and Lolas have told you when you were young and it is being passed on from generation to generation. Next, we have Parable. Parable is a story in prose or verse which illustrates one or more instructive lessons or principles. Parable is different from fable. Fables involve animals, inanimate objects, and the like, while parable has human characters. Well, of course, one of the most famous parables that we have is Parable of the Sower. We also have Parable of the Prodigal Son and some other examples of parable. Next, we have myth. It is a traditional or legendary story usually concerning some being a hero or event with or without a determinable basis of fact or a natural explanation. It is concerned with deities and demigods and explains some practice, right, or phenomenon of nature. For example, we have Greek mythology, specifically the story of the adventures of Odysseus, Troy, and some other examples of myths. Next, we have anecdote. These are merely products of the writer's imagination and the main aim is to bring out lessons to the readers. Just like other forms of stories, anecdotes are common and highly effective devices found throughout literature. Anecdotes make conversations or dialogue more personal and interesting. Usually, they are employed in a way that will make the audience and or other characters laugh or think more deeply about a topic. So that is all about anecdote. Next, we have place. This is presented on stage, is divided into acts, and each has many scenes. The playwright uses various dramatic elements to create more profound meanings and enhance understanding of the audience. Also, they insert text apart from the actual dialogues of the characters to unfold the description of characters on stage, their natural action, and psychological intentions. In this way, the writers make their text emotive, love-like, and thought-provoking. Of course, the very famous example of play of a play is Ang Kuling El Bimbo. Well, it's actually a story about friendship told by using the songs of the most iconic Pinoy rock band from the 90s. So if you haven't watched Ang Kuling El Bimbo, you better get your copy now and watch it now. Then lastly, we have science fiction. Deals mainly with the impact of actual or imagined society upon society or individuals. The premise may either be based on or flatly contradicts scientific facts and principles. That is science fiction. And those are the different genres under fiction. Okay, let's proceed to non-fiction. Unlike fiction a while ago, non-fiction, these are works of literature that are based from real-life experiences. Compared to fiction a while ago, it deals with imagination. But this time, when we talk about non-fiction, we talk about works of literature that are not based from imagination, but based on real-life experiences. First, we have diary. Diary is a daily written record or account of the writer's own experience, thoughts, activities, or observations. Diary is actually a form of autobiographical writing, a regularly kept record of the diary's activities and reflections. Written primarily for the writer's use alone, the diary has a frankness 
That isn't like writing done for publication. Remember when you were in high school? You also did your own diary, right? And I believe that some of you are still writing their own diary. So that is all about a diary. Next, we have autobiography. It is an account of a person's life written by that person. The best example of an autobiography is Long Walk to Freedom written by Nelson Mandela. It talks about how African President Nelson Mandela himself fought their freedom for 27 years. It narrates his own saga of how he helped his black countrymen throw off their apartheid chains, how the African National Congress wished and won its struggles, and how he became his nation's first black president. So that is an example of an autobiography. Next we have biography. In autobiography a while ago, the person is the writer himself. While in biography, this deals with the life of a person which may be about himself, his autobiography, or that of others written by another person. An example for this would be Steve Jobs by Walter Isaacson. Basically, it talks about the life of Steve Jobs, how he became successful, how he turned Apple as one of the best companies that we have in the world. Next, we have Journal. It is a magazine or periodical, especially of a serious or learned nature. Journal can be about education, politics, governance, environment, and some other important topics. Next, we have Memoir. It is a specific event in the life of a person. Memoir, history or record composed from personal observation and experience. It is actually closely related to and often confused with autobiography. A memoir usually differs chiefly in the degree of emphasis placed on external events, whereas writers of autobiography are concerned primarily with themselves as subject matter. Writers of memoir are usually persons who have played roles in or have been close observers of historical events and whose main purpose is to describe or interpret the events. That is all about memoir. Next, we have letters. It is a prose form in which by the force of its style and importance of its statement becomes an object of interest in its own right. Can you still remember your first ever letter addressed to your friend, to your family, to your boyfriend, or to your girlfriend? Well, those are just some examples of letters. Next we have news. A news story is a factual prose story for print or broadcast media about a person, place, or event answering these five questions. Who, what, when, where, why, and how. These five WH questions are also known as the lead. You know, 2020 is the year that we all don't want to remember. Because a lot of things have already happened. Outbreak of coronavirus, explosion in Beirut, Lebanon, the passing of the anti-terrorism bill, shutdown of ABS-CBN, all of those things are example of news. We have essay. This expresses the viewpoint or opinion of the writer about a particular problem or event. Did you know that the word essay is derived from a Latin word exagium, which roughly translates to presenting one's case? So essays are a short piece of writing representing one side of the argument or one's experiences, stories, etc. And essays are actually very personalized. We have speech. The expression of or the ability to express thoughts and feelings by articulate sounds. 
Who is your favorite speaker? Well, as for me, my favorite speaker would be Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Next, we have oration. This is a formal treatment of a subject and is intended to be spoken in public. It appeals to the intellect, to the will, or to the emotions of the audience. And usually, oration is being delivered in a formal and dignified manner. And of course, we call the speaker as orator. And I believe some of you have already experienced oration. Next is research. It is a systematic investigation into and study of materials and sources in order to establish facts and reach new conclusions. During second semester, you'll have your research subject. This is actually done as a requirement for a class. Then we have thesis, a long piece of writing on a particular subject that is done to earn a degree at a university. Later on, the moment you enter college, you are required to finish your thesis. Because if you're not going to do so, you will never graduate in a certain university. And lastly, we have cooking books. A book of directions explaining how to prepare and cook various kinds of food. For example, we have salt, fat, acid, heat, mastering the elements of good cooking written by Samin Nosrat. The title's four words refer to the central pillars of cooking. The book actually explains how mastering them will transform everyday cooking from road recipe following to something more intuitive and just like. So that is all about cooking books. And those are the different genres under nonfiction. Okay, that ends our discussion for today. Now, for questions or clarifications, you may contact any of the following. Just check your teacher's messenger account, check your teacher's email, or you may also visit their LMS profile. And of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, watch on our YouTube account, Languages Academy. That's all for today. Stay safe and God bless. Blue Vision Gems.